to the end of six. When we come back, we're going to talk about this lightweight division. Run, run, run. Hey, Rob. Robbie. Robbie. Something to look for just for you guys to pick up. Um, Prescott has been getting very frustrated with his headbutting. And every once in a while, you get some shots of that. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Thanks, man. Because he's even showing it. He's, you know, he's... <clears throat> yeah. Undefeated lightweight prospect Brady Prescott in our main event. Here are the Ring Magazine rankings. At 135 pounds. Of course, Juan Diaz, Juan Manuel Marquez. They're going to be meeting up on February 28th. And there's number two, Casamayor. Seems like he's been doing it forever. He's going to be fighting Julio Diaz on April 4th. He's all smiles when he's here in South Florida. These are his fans, his people. And tonight, they saw their fellow Cuban stars, Arislan de Lara and Yuri Orcas Gamboa, score first round knockouts. And now a chance to watch Brady Prescott here in round seven against Humberto Toledo. And again, what I like about Prescott, I always like the technical workings of a fighter and the mental workings of a fighter to carry that technique under pressure. He understands his identity and he's trying to keep room where he's able to catch the shorter man on the outside and on the way in. And he's done a pretty good job of it for most of the fight. I like the discipline of Prescott in that way, in that area. Humberto Soto was able to get rid of Toledo in the third round. Lamont Peterson was able to get rid of him in the first round. Does Brady Prescott need to get rid of him tonight for you to be impressed, Teddy? No, I'm impressed off of his overall record. I'm impressed with his knockout over Amir Khan, the sensation over in England that they were building up. He was a terrific amateur. He was a silver medalist from the 2004 Olympics. I'm impressed already with that, and I'm impressed tonight even without the knockout. Sure. You don't have to have a knockout to impress me. I'm impressed again that Prescott is staying true to his identity. He understands where he should be, what dimension of the ring he should own. It's the outside for the most part, and he's doing a pretty good job of being steady with that, consistent with that. And those qualities will serve him. Serve him as he moves forward in his in his career. It will serve him more than a quick knockout. Because he will become a little bit more solid in those areas from this kind of work. As he looks to move up the rankings, you saw Ring Magazine has him in the top 10. But some big headline makers, of course, in the division. You know, Toledo came into this fight having been involved in fights with head crashes, head butts, so nothing new, and he gets rocked there, and the referee jumps in to give him an eight count. Five, six, seven, eight, okay? Went bouncing against the ropes, and Asamenos comes in and starts the count. And again, watch the discipline of Prescott. He's not overshooting himself. He's not smothering his shot. Oh. He's keeping room to counter just like that. Good left hand. Was that the seventh? Was that the seventh? Seventh round? round. Yeah. So you got a knockdown there. So you got a knockdown. Here's the knockdown. See that again? Can I see that Technical again? Technical knockdown, yeah. Let me see that again, Rob. One face Come first on. into the ropes. Oh, did he swing and miss, or did the left hook get him? The left hook got him. The first left hook got him. But then did he swing and miss?
There's two ways to get a guy. You can lead or you can counter. Nice counter left hook by Prescott, the first one. And the second one barely touches the chin, just grazes the chin, the tip of the chin, and gets the wobbly legs of Toledo. And he goes into the rope. And that's a perfect example where if the rope's not there, he goes down. So the referee correctly scores it a knockdown. Yeah, if the rope's not there, he ends up on the Dolphins training facility here at Nova Southeastern University. He was heading right through it. And the ropes hold him up, so a technical knockdown and a 10-8 round on Teddy's scorecard. This is an easy fight to score. Prescott has dominated all night long. 20-0 with 18 knockouts. This is first fight since that stunning first round knockout of the Olympic medalist Amir Khan. There's the uppercut by Prescott. Toledo trying to chase him back. Now listen, here's something to look for, something that might sound a little funny at first, but Prescott has an opportunity to land that right uppercut as Toledo leans forward. But it might be the best opportunity for Toledo to get back in the fight. And a warning there again. But what I mean by that is when Prescott throws that right uppercut that could be there for him, mm -hmm. he drops it. And he leaves himself wide open to a left hook from Toledo, a left hook that Toledo needs desperately to get back in his fight. So yeah, the right uppercut's there. There's the right uppercut is. right there. So we should be watching to how he drops the hand yes. prior to firing it off. Yeah, it's there for him. There's no doubt about it. But Toledo also has an opportunity before it gets there. There it is again. Before it gets there, Toledo has a chance to beat him with the left hook if Toledo is up to it. If he can look at it, zero in on it, after being buzzed here this round. Well, Prescott has been trying to target that uppercut here in this round more and more. So maybe that opportunity exists. Let's see. There's a sharp right hand from Prescott. Trying to split the guard. There's the uppercut again. And the left hook counter is there. A lot of counter opportunities for Prescott. Takes that little step back. He invites you in. And then he pulls the trigger on that left hook. There's the uppercut again. It's there. Backed it up with the left hand as well. No hold. No hold. Again, an effective punch. There it is again for Prescott, that right uppercut. But again, it can be a dangerous punch because the way he delivers it. Right uppercut lands that time by Prescott. And now holding behind the head by Toledo. One point, holding punching. And there's punching. the point deduction Time. by Telus Asamenos. One point, holding punching. One point, no more. So a point deduction here in round number eight. But we're not here. The, there was no knockdown, was there? No. no I don't want to see that. No, it's a 10 9 round and yeah. minus one for 10. Yeah, I, I, it wasn't a knockdown, right? No. I, I want to no, see the no, uppercut. No, no. There it is. See, can I draw on that? Can I draw on that? For what? Oh. ESPN Friday Night Fights presented by Just For Men Hair Color knocks out the gray better than ever. We're at Nova Southeastern University, home to the Sharks. We've seen a couple of those in the ring tonight. And there you can see why the point's taken away. You see the left hand of Toledo goes behind the neck. Behind the head of Prescott, he was holding him and trying to hit him with the uppercut. The move of a desperate man. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas with you ringside. The man in the black trunks with the Colombian flag trim is the unbeaten Brady Prescott. Ring Magazine has him ranked in the top 10 among the lightweights. 20-0 with 18 knockouts. In that last round, he had 29 connects. A 61 to 16 connect advantage over the course of the last three rounds. 
Prescott's been in complete control. 